If you've been keeping up to date on my previous videos, you would know that the US is officially divided with people who believe we are in a recession and the people that believe we aren't. Regardless of which side you choose, both beliefs will lead to the same outcome, and that is screwing the middle class. Now, before you start to panic, I'll explain why this is in a second and what you can do about it. But before I go on, if you're new to the channel, my name's Hayden, and I make weekly videos on how to make money, how to invest money, learning about economics, and pretty much everything to do with finance. And in today's video, we need to talk about why it's so vital to be saving your money now and how it will be so beneficial to do so for surviving what's ahead. Right now, the biggest problem the US is facing is inflation, as well as smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So go ahead and give it a tap. And the reason to do this is so YouTube and I know you want to see more videos like this. Also, guys, make sure to subscribe and comment it down below, and I'll make sure to reply to you in a comment. But back to the video, in today's economy, no longer is the main focus about the pandemic. It's about inflation. You see, when fewer items are available, consumers are willing to pay more to obtain the items, especially with money they didn't work for. Inflation Inflation is the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. Inflation is typically a broad measure, such as the overall increase in prices or the increase in the cost of living in a country. Inflation usually occurs in nearly any product or service, including need-based expenses such as housing, food, medical care, and utilities, as well as want-based expenses such as cosmetics, automobiles, and even jewelry. Now, once inflation becomes prevalent throughout an economy, the expectation of further inflation becomes becomes an overriding concern in the consciousness of consumers and businesses alike, and this is what we're seeing today. So how on earth did we get here, and how is this screwing the middle class? To answer this, we have to go back to 2020, and the current high inflation, which at one point was 9.1%, can be attributed to many different factors that happened during this time in 2020 when we had the pandemic. The government's response to saving the countrywide lockdowns was to cushion family finances by quantitative easing. This included stimulus checks, discounted loans, and even tax breaks, allowing consumers to continue to purchase goods during a time when most businesses were forced to shut down, sparking an unusually high demand while the supply chain was still extremely low. When fewer items are available, consumers are willing to pay more to obtain the item, especially with money that they didn't work for. The result is higher prices due to demand pull inflation. This led to a rapid increase in essential products like gas, food, and even shelter. This week's July consumer prices index reported that in one year, food had increased 11%, gas was up 44%, electricity was up 15%, new cars up 10%, and shelter was even up 5.7%. With little increase in salary, these price hikes are becoming extremely difficult to afford for the middle class, especially for those that are living paycheck to paycheck. Now we're at a point where 75% of middle class households say their income is falling behind the cost of living, and the solution relies on how the feds are going to fix this, which, spoiler alert, is only going to make things worse. Inflation in October of 2021 was at 6.2%, and each month moving forward grew us to a peak of 9.1%. That means people in the US have had to deal with inflation over 6% for the past 10 months, and this has caused some catastrophic financial hardships for many families. People are now no longer able to afford everyday living, and it's caused them to seek other methods to make up for it, specifically borrowing money. A new study by the Federal Reserve Bank found that Americans increased their credit card balances by a cumulative 13% year over year in the second quarter of 2022. Credit card debt rose by $46 billion in the quarter alone, which is one of the highest increases since 1999. For those under 25, credit card balances rose 30%, and it went up by 25% for people with low credit scores. The number of consumers with personal loans also reached record highs in the second quarter of 2022, driven by an increase in loans to subprime borrowers, which for those that don't know, are people with lower than good credit scores. This means these people typically receive less favorable interest rates, which will play a big role in today's video. If the feds don't get inflation under control soon, we will see a major influx in bankruptcy while also forcing millions of people under the poverty line. And we're already seeing this happen now. The number of new bankruptcy cases filed in March of 2022 jumped significantly from February, and the total number of new commercial and consumer bankruptcies filed in March grew 
2.5% over the month prior, with consumer filings increasing by 34% and commercial cases jumping by 26%. Inflation has not only taken a toll on consumer debt, but it also is affecting people's pay. So not only is the middle class being forced to pay more for essential goods, but they also have to deal with their wages being worth less. The latest reading of hourly wages showed a 5.1% increase in June from a year earlier, which means inflation generally wiped out the entire boost in income and made their salaries have less buying power. The reason the middle and lower classes are more affected by inflation is because a higher percentage of their money goes towards essentials, unlike wealthier people. For example, if person A makes $40,000 after taxes and spends $20,000 on necessities like food, shelter, utilities, and rent, it's roughly 50% of their income. While person B, who makes $80,000 after taxes, spending the same on necessities is only spending 25% of their income. Now add inflation into the equation and no longer can the lower and middle class afford to make ends meet. While the upper class, which is way higher than usually an 80K salary, is barely affected. This has given the middle and lower class no other choice but to take on debt with variable interest rates or go into bankruptcy. And they are literally sitting ducks for what's about to happen next. And therefore, it's so important to save money now before it's too late. In order for the Federal Reserve to combat inflation, they have two tools they can use. And these consist of quantitative tightening and raising interest rates. The first we'll talk about is quantitative tightening. This is when the central bank sells its assets, mainly bonds, to reduce the supply of money circulating in the economy. They remove cash from the economy in exchange for bonds with the intent to slow down consumer spending and lower inflation. And we saw the opposite happen of this during the pandemic, and it's called quantitative easing. And this is when the central bank buys bonds in exchange for cash from the general public in order to stimulate growth and spending in the economy. Now, the second tool they have is raising interest rates, also known as the federal funds rate. And this is the tool that is going to not only help lower inflation, but end up screwing over 75% of the middle class. Now, I'm going to try to explain why this is, and it's quite confusing, but I'll try to break it down to the best of my knowledge so just try to stay with me. The term federal funds rate refers to the target interest rate set by the Federal Open Market Committee, also known as the FOMC. This target is the rate at which commercial banks borrow and lend their excess reserves to each other overnight. Now, the FOMC, which is the policymaking body of the Federal Reserve System, meets eight times a year to set the target federal funds rate, which is part of the monetary policy, and this is used to help promote economic growth. Now, we're probably going to see the next one happen in September of this year. Financial institutions are required to maintain their interest-bearing accounts at Federal Reserve banks to ensure they have enough money to cover depositors, withdrawals, and other obligations. Any money in their reserve that exceeds the required level is available for lending to other banks that may not have met the requirement. So how does this affect you? Well, you see, when the federal funds rate is increased for banks, they in turn pass this increase onto their customers. This will indirectly raise the interest rates on mortgages, credit cards, personal loans, student loans, auto loans, and even business loans to make up for the increase the feds put on them. This will also make it much harder to take out loans of any kind from the bank to minimize the amount of risk that the bank has in order to get paid back. Now, we've already seen the feds do this this year. We've seen a 25 basis point hike in March, an additional 50 basis points in May, 75 points in June, 75 points in July, and we'll most likely see another 75 points in September. This means the record high amount of people who took out credit card debt and loans just to make ends meet are now about to get screwed even more by rising interest rates. Almost all credit cards come with variable rates tied to the prime rates, not fixed rates. And when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, chances are highly likely that the prime rate is also going to rise. This means the interest you pay on your outstanding balance and your minimum payment could also increase as soon as your next month bill. Today, the average rate on credit cards has recently been ticking upwards and now averages more than 17%. This is a necessary step though for the Federal Reserve in order to lower inflation. Unfortunately, many people will be hurt in the process. The good news, however, is it's still fairly early and there's still time to prepare yourself for this change in the economy. So now, now is the time to start creating an emergency fund, which will help during those unforeseeable events like a car breaking down or even a pipe bursting in your house and start paying off any 
variable interest you might have. As always though, I highly recommend speaking with a licensed financial advisor to help figure out a plan on tackling any debt that you have. With that being said, let me know how you're dealing with these hard times down in the comment section below and I'll try to comment back. Otherwise, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, turn on post notifications, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.